So I'm here at Wheelbase Staveley as uh, part of their demo day. Uh, so we're actually in the workshop. So if there's any clunking in the background, or I think we've got jackdaws up in the roof as well. Uh, which leads me to Jack from Bosch. Uh, seeing a massive growth in e-bike interest, e-bike sales. Loads of the bikes going out today on the demo on the Fells are e-bikes. Yep. And this is uh, one of the new bikes into stock with the new Bosch smart system on it. So Jack's the man who trains all the uh, UK Bosch sort of well, sellers really, isn't yeah, it? So be who be. better to show us through the tech of the new smart system than Jack? Hello. Okay, so here we have one of the new Mondrake Crafties. Um, we sell to multiple brands, but this is just one of the ones that stocks our new smart system. Uh, so we'll start at the bottom with the drive unit. This is the Gen 4CX, which you're probably quite familiar with, with the current system. However, with the new smart system, it now has a few different features. Uh, Cabling is different, uh, which means it's not forwards and backwards compatible with the older system. Um, it's still 85 newton meters of torque, so it means that if you currently have a Bosch powered e-bike, you're not going to lose out on any of the torque spec figures. Um, so it's and still... torque is basically how much, kind of how much grunt it feels like yeah, the bike has it's got. The pull it's got. They all have a because e-bikes all have like 250 watts 250 top end. Watts that's legal, isn't it? Yeah. So that's yeah. a nominal power. That's different yeah. to peak output. But what you'll feel as a rider when you are surging up a hill or something, yeah. that's that's your uh, newton meters. Yeah, I mean, you also have assistance as well, which I guess is more important. So on this, it's 340% assistance. So 100% assistance would be what you're putting in, and then you've got that 340 on the top of that. So that's the main thing you're kind of looking for. So if you're, say, putting 200 watts in, it'll yeah ramp it right up it'll make you feel like an olympic sprint on top of that <laughs> yeah but obviously you'd get quite a lot more back yeah that. yeah okay okay so moving on from the drive unit we'll go to the 750 battery uh so it's obviously quite hard to see with this particular bike because it's encased in the motor uh, i know on this particular brand being mondraker the battery isn't removable uh, but most will have a removable battery which will require a key so you pop the key in the top twist it and the battery will come out the frame. But there are, again, there are pros and cons with having a removable battery or an internal yeah, battery. Yeah. A lot, I think a lot of the brands that are saying they have a sort of permanent battery will say they're seeing gains structurally yes. uh, in terms of stiffness, yeah. in terms of you know, waterproofing and so well. tube integrity, yeah. I think, whereas, uh, because obviously you're getting a closed tube, which yeah. is more structurally yeah. efficient, yeah. And, uh, and but this is a carbon yeah. bike as well. So. Aesthetically as well, don't clearly have a... a an opening anywhere, so it means that it's a nice, sleek design. Yeah, so your recharge point on here is there, isn't it? Yeah. But obviously, that means if you're living in a flat and having to carry your bike upstairs, that's of course yeah. quite a lot yeah. of bikes. So again, there's yeah. there's lots of things to you know bear yeah. in mind when you're yeah. choosing. Yeah. yeah. So with the smart system, uh, depending on the brand uh, which is spec, there's two different ways the battery will be mounted. Uh, most batteries would come out the bottom of the bike. But now some brands, and I'm not sure who at the moment because it's still so new to the market, but some will slide out the bottom, uh, which again, having the battery in front of the motor will keep that center of gravity yeah. uh, slightly lower. Which white in handling, particular, yeah. I think, sort I of think, pioneered that really. Yeah, I think white with the early adopters of that with the current system, but I know with the smart system, with the 750 battery being so big, it does make more sense for the battery to be in front of the motor. Yeah, because the lower you get that battery, the more the bike feels more yeah. like a natural bike it yeah. lowers the center of gravity it's easier to turn into corners yeah, things like that yeah it's uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah clearly a 750 is it's a huge battery uh, it's roughly 70 millimeters longer than the 65 uh, so you will notice that the style of the frames will be slightly different okay so moving on to the cockpit and i think from a visual point of view this is where you'll notice the most changes so we'll start with the LED remote on the left hand side. So this is your main controller and I'm sure you can see ergonomically it's much more tailored to the rider's hand shape. So you can see it kind of curves it's around the, yeah, curves it's around the grip a bit more. 3D now isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we do this in two different mounting options as well. We do a slim clamp and a standard clamp depending on what brake levers are, are spec on the bike. So if you've got uh, Magura or SRAM for example you'd have slim clamp. Um, I think this one on here is a standard clamp, so you can see the way that the brake lever is attached here. 
um, it's slightly raised up to give it that little bit more clearance. Uh, but yeah. th this is something that the end consumer can change afterwards if they decide to change the brakes. Uh, so functionality, you have your main LED on here. So if you scroll through the modes, which is up and down, you can clearly see the LED changes colour uh, to show which mode you're in. And that's, that, that's essentially what power you're in. Yeah, yeah. And what's good now as well with the battery indicator, uh, this is five LEDs, but it does actually change colour now from a blue to a white LED, which is in 10% increments. So again, and you don't have a display on, for example, that does mean that you have more of an idea of where the battery is. So it's pretty good. So there's a half step, although there's, there's yeah, still yeah. five LEDs, yeah. but essentially there's a half step yeah. within that yeah. as they color change. Yeah. And sorry, just for people who are completely unfamiliar with the system, what are the different power levels you have? So you've got Eco, then you've got Tor or Tor Plus, depending on what spec on the bike. You have Sport and EMTB. Uh, again, that's uh, depending on what spec, and then Turbo. So you can have an option on this of any four modes possible. Right. Okay. Um, and that's spec by the manufacturer, or is no, that something this, the user can change? This is something that comes on the bike preset, but if you take your bike to a local dealer, then they can change these four modes. So for example, if you never use turbo, because it obviously would wear components faster or use more battery, you can actually get this taken off and use uh, another mode, for example. So quite useful. And, and also, something you touched on just then, you don't have to have this display yes, on there. Yes, yeah. So if you look at the back of the Kiox here, uh, there's two cables. Uh, one of these cables is connected directly to the drive unit and basically what you do is you take the main power cable from the back of the display and bypass this completely. You can take it off the bars and then that goes directly into the LED remote. So nice and easy. But I can't, you know, I have to say it's, it's a lovely looking head unit. It's a mean, really nice head unit, yeah. That's, that's what, I mean, yes, there's, there are changes with the battery and with the motor, but I think it's this kind of yeah, yeah. rider-facing so, part of smart system that's yeah. really the highlight, I think, that people most obviously recognise. So with the Kiox, you can see it's obviously a very nice uh, colour display. I know with the uh, current Kiox, it has got the on-off switch on it, but this is basically a monitor for the LED remote. So now you can't have the Kiox by itself, but you can have the LED remote by itself. Um, so with the Kiox, you can see this is our own mount now. Um, it's a singular mount, but you do have three different mounting options. So clearly this is an out front style. You can have it in the traditional Bosch style on top of the stem, and then you can also have it sat down the left hand side here if you wanted to. So you right. three different options. Um, and then the base plate, which is underneath here, as you can see. Uh, with this particular one, the cables are coming out the back. But if you wanted this mount to be on top of the stem, for example, then you can get replacement plates to bring the cables out the front to make it look neater. Right, so it just wraps over the front yeah, of the bar there. Yeah, and you can see with the way this attaches, uh, quite nice and simple, uh, there's a spring-loaded part of the front, just onto there like that, and nice and easy clip. So Nice and simple. secure. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to the Kiox in a little bit more detail. Uh, as you can see, the screen is nice and vivid. Um, and if we go from left to right, you can see you have all your different data screens, so plenty of things available uh, on here. One thing I do like on here is the new range screen. So if we click onto there, you now have your range in each mode, which I think is very right, useful. Right, that really helps with yeah, kind of I mean, rationing your battery. Yeah, so if you were off out in the Lake District where we are today and you potentially have 15 miles to go, uh, you would clearly know from this screen as an estimate uh, roughly what you've got left and it updates that according to the ride so far is yes, that correct yes um so similar to a car so a car will update its range based on how the bikes so how the car's been driven whereas this will update itself every four kilometers uh, based on the riding style so it's, it's fairly accurate so if you're riding across norfolk it's going to look a lot yeah. more optimistic than you are if you're riding yeah. through the lakes but, but cle yeah but clearly on a flat road um it will have a more accurate um estimation because it's quite constant whereas yeah. if you're going to go up a hill and downhill up and down um, then it will need to keep and different surfaces and stuff like that yeah. so it's it's a, it's still a guideline yeah, but it's yeah. a lot more accurate yeah and also having the different modes there makes it a lot easier really to good, kind yeah. of budget yeah yeah so what's good as well so if you're not using the led so the kiox at all um clearly you won't have a percentage 
but we will talk about the Flow app in a minute, which is a new phone application we do. And a lot of this information is actually on the display itself on the phone. So it means if you're just using the LED remote by itself and you wanted to know your, your estimated range in each mode and your exact battery percentage, then you can just look at the phone app. Uh, I'll obviously have it in your pocket uh, to see more information, so quite useful. Yeah, if people don't want it under the nose but would just like the backup. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, a couple of the other functions on here, I mean, you've said now the on and off switch now moves to the remote. Yes. But the walk mode has changed as well to make walk it easier to access. walk mode has changed, yeah. So on the previous system, you used to have to press the walk button and then hold the plus. Now on this, you can see the walk button is on the minus, which is here. And then you will see on the LED remote, the, um, the LEDs go up and down. And then on the screen itself, it will ask you to walk the bike. So basically what happens with this, when you're holding down the walk button, you basically start moving the bike ever so slightly and walk mode will kick in. And what's also useful on the new walk assist is depending on how fast you want it to be, um, if you take it to your local bike, just the speed of your walk assist. From, right. It's 2.49 kilometers to four kilometers an hour. So if you're just using it to amble along recreationally, yeah. but if maybe you're racing yeah. enduro or something like that, yeah, of course, and yeah, you need to yeah. scramble up a short section. Yeah, I mean, if you live in a place like Lake District where we are now, um, let's say you're going to Helvellyn, as uh, for instance, I, I've done that a couple of times myself, and walk assist can be quite fast sometimes. So yeah. to have you don't want to get, to, yeah. you don't want to be chasing <laughs> the bike up the hill. Yeah, to have the option to dial it down a bit, I think so that's a that's a really good idea, and I think uh, for the amount of customers that we actually sell to, there's so many different variations of riding types, riding styles. I think it's really good now that we've got much more customization. Yeah, because even with not 85 newton meters, you're not going to get up everything, are you? I mean, you can get up a lot. Yeah, you, know, you can get up a lot. Put, yeah, you've still got to put quite a lot of effort in yourself. Yeah. So I think walk assist, yeah, it's a, it's a useful feature. And are there any biometrics in the smart system as well in terms of uh, rider? Feedback? So if we look back at the Kiox, you can clearly see on here we've got power and cadence. So the motor itself does have a built-in power meter and it will register all your cadence. And once the ride's finished, you download the uh, route to the Flow app and this will show you all the parameters you've done. So your average speed, average cadence, average power, and it gives you some nice graphs as well if you're yeah. interested in the fitness side of things. So if you were on a fitness plan, you could still go, right, yeah. I need to do a 200 watt ride today. Yeah. Yeah. And the motor will still assist you. Yes. But yeah. it, you will get that feedback as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Certainly, so, you know, it's. I, I remember riding first bike that had that, and I was like, "Yeah, actually, yeah, it's, this really yeah. appeals to me." I mean, you know, it's yeah. these because that's the thing. I mean, there's kind of this attitude from some people that e-bikes aren't for proper mountain mm -hmm. bikers; they're cheating or something like that. I think most people would be very surprised how hard yeah. they're working, but they're just getting more riding in. They're getting more distance in. They're getting. Well, more fun in really. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. more miles or more descents, yeah. whatever you yeah, want I to bracket it you're just getting more riding mm. yeah. and you're still working really hard i think when e-bikes first came out there was that traditional it's cheating um clearly it would be cheating if you entered a race against someone on an e-bike yeah that's completely different and maybe on strava um if you did a normal mountain bike segment on an e-bike it's clearly going to annoy some people but now strava has specific e-bike segments we have specific e-bike e races and like you just mentioned it kind of opens mountain biking up to more people um and even someone like myself, I don't particularly need an e-bike, um, but I'd rather ride an e-bike <coughs> based on what you just said. You can go to a trail centre, you can maybe do two or three times the amount of riding for the same effort. I'll still get back to the car absolutely knackered because uh, I put effort in myself, but it just makes it more accessible and potentially more fun depending on the sort of rider you are. Yeah, and I've had sessions where... I've actually noticeably improved on a rider just because I've been able to yeah. ride a certain descent several times. Yeah, yeah. And at um, the end of the day, yeah. Tom Pitkalk was EMTV world champion. He was, yeah. You know, he's a fit lad. Yeah, yeah. But I, I he realises they're a good laugh. Yeah, I know Tom. Uh, I know Tom a little bit. And uh, I went for a ride at Gisborne Forest a few years back and I just started the job with Bosch and we bumped into him on the trail and he had to go on my e-bike at the time and he straight away loved it. Uh, and that's coming from a world tour, multiple world champion rider. So it does show that the the market for e-bikes is quite broad. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Jack, thanks very much indeed for talking it through it. Okay. So just to recap, Bosch Smart System. Yep. 
Uh, that's the actual hardware on the bike. Yep. And then I think probably what's best if we do, because we've already been going on for a quarter of an hour, uh, is maybe look at the uh, phone app. Yes. As a separate video. Yep. And I'll just put a link into that at this video at this point. Okay. But yeah, thanks very much to Jack for his time. Uh, yeah. Thanks very much to the wheelbase for uh, evacuating the... Uh, um, you know, this is just one of the workshops here and some of the stock, so it really is a, a huge shop, you know. They've got, I mean, they do e-bikes from all sorts of brands, don't they? Yeah, There's White, think, Mondrake, Yeti, yeah. uh, Trek. I think specifically all sorts. from a Bosch side, I think it's eight or nine different brands, yeah. which is, it's pretty good. Yeah. And so, like, like everyone in the industry, everyone's expanding quickly. So, so and it, but it's see. great to be able to see them all under one new yeah, roof, yeah. and certainly with events like this demo, to yeah. actually go and try them on. You can try them in a shop, you can try them in a car park, but yeah, it's definitely. when you take them on your normal ride and just yeah. go, oh wow, okay. Yeah. And this. obviously, with the last two years, everything's kind of been locked down. Even going to a bike shop, you could you could go and buy a bike, but to actually test ride one, it's quite rare. So it's, I think it's really good that. The shop like Wheelbase is offering these sort of uh, demo weekends, gets people, you know, in and amongst it, they can see what they want to buy beforehand, because let's face it, they're not cheap bikes. Uh, so you obviously want to make that investment uh, the best for you. Yeah, and you're buying from confidence from a shop that's got stuff fully trained by you as well. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and great trails. Yeah, of course. Right. Well, thanks very much for your time, Jack. Thank and uh, yeah, thanks to Wheelbase again. So obviously, any questions you've got, uh, get busy in the comments. And to be honest, I'll probably just forward them straight to Jack because he's the expert, not me. But uh, again, thanks to Toby and all the staff at Wheelbase. Thanks to Jack for his time. And we, I'm going to put a video on the smartphone app. Yep. And uh, yeah, you can find out some more details about the extra tunability and control of the new Bosch smart system on there.